Since this is a simple introduction to CSS, we're going to be focusing on some of the most commonly used CSS properties. Mostly, we will be dealing with font properties and ways in which we can control colors of elements and borders. Before we get into that, I did want to explain what the box model is. This is important to understand as we get into CSS and understand how to utilize CSS. In this simple example, I have an H1, then I have a div that contains an H3, a paragraph, and an inline element of strong. I have some simple CSS that is giving the div a width and a height of 200 pixels, a border, a background color, and I've declared margin and padding. I wanted to show you this so you can understand how margin and padding can affect various elements. Margin and padding are going to dictate the spaces between the elements on your website. What I'm showing you here is the margin and padding on this particular element. These things are normally not visible, but I've highlighted them so we can see what they look like and what they do. The orange overlay represents the margin. Margin is always on the outside of the box and it is transparent. The green overlay indicates the padding. Padding is going to occur on the inside of the box. It allows you to create spacing between the edge of the box and the content that resides within the box. Every single element inside of HTML exists inside of a box. What I've done here is I've turned on borders on every single element. As you can see, every element on the page resides inside some sort of box or rectangular type of shape. This is illustrating the box model. It doesn't matter if the element is a block level element or an inline element. All elements exist within the box. This concept is important because understanding it will allow you to effectively create margin and padding on your various elements and control the spacing between the elements themselves. Let's take a look at a slightly more complex page. This page is about leopard sharks. You can see that I have an H1, H2, paragraph. I'm using some inline elements. I have an image displaying on my page. And at the bottom, I have a list. In my unordered list, I'm using the inline element of strong to make the main descriptions of the list bold. What we're gonna do is we're going to use some simple CSS so that we can control the way that the page looks and provide some additional styling. I'm going to go ahead and expand my CSS panel since we'll be writing some CSS. One of the main things that you're going to want to do within the elements on the page is control the font appearance. Text is extremely important since it's going to make up the bulk of many websites. What we'll do is we'll target the body element, which is the main container that wraps around all of the visual elements on the page. I'm going to go ahead and specify the font family property. This will allow me to define what sort of font I want to display. I'm going to go ahead and request Helvetica as my default font. As I've explained in a previous exercise, whenever you define a font, you'll always want to add a fallback font in case your first choice is not available. In this example, I'm going to have Helvetica be my first choice, Arial be my second choice, and if neither of those are available, I'll just go ahead and have the default sans serif from the user's operating system define the font itself. In addition to setting the font family, we're going to go ahead and add some additional styles to our elements. Now the additional styles, I'm going to want to provide them to individual elements rather than using the body as a catch-all. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to target both H1s, which are heading 1, and H2. As you can see, for my selector, I'm separating the two elements with a comma. 
This is called a group selector and it allows you to select more than one element. I'm going to go ahead and specify that the font weight be normal. By default, headings are bold. I've gone ahead and made them now display with a normal font weight. And as you can see, they no longer appear as bold. I'm also going to change the color of the fonts and I'm going to use a hex value to specify the color. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to set the margin setting to zero. As you can see, when I set the margin to zero, the two headings are going to compress and appear closer together. Although we never defined a margin on the headings, the browser has some default settings. So when I reduce the margin or make it zero, as I'm doing here, you can see that that spacing between the elements is going to disappear. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another property. This one is going to be font variant, and this will let me specify if I want the text to appear as regular or as small caps. And I'm going to type small dash caps. And as you can see, the font now changes and all of the letters are capitalized, but any letters that were capitalized initially are going to appear larger. As an alternative to font variant, we also have something called text transform. This allows us to alter how the fonts are rendered. This particular element allows us to pass in a couple of different values. The first one that I'm going to show you is capitalize. When we use capitalize, it's going to automatically capitalize the first letter of every word. So even though hound, sharks, and species are not capitalized, you can see when I add text transform, capitalize, all of the letters are capitalized. We can also use a value of uppercase, and this is going to transform the letters so they all appear as uppercase. Conversely, you have an option for lowercase, which will render the letters all as lowercase letters. I'm going to leave mine at uppercase for this particular example. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to target my paragraph elements. So I'll select the paragraphs and I'm going to use a property of line height. Line height is going to set the distance between lines. This is one of the few values in CSS that does not need a unit. We just put the number. The number is based on a ratio of the original font size of these elements. So if I go ahead and I specify that I want the font size of paragraphs to be 15 pixels, you can see that the font size is going to shrink down subtly. The line height is now set to 30 pixels. It's two times 15. So if I want this to be a little bit less, I could type in one and a half. And now you can see that the line spacing is going to tighten up slightly. I'm gonna go back and make a selector for my H2 elements, and we are going to set a border. I only want the border to appear on the bottom, so I'm going to use a property of border-bottom. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say that I want the line to be dashed. I want it to be two pixels, and I'll plug in a hex value. As you can see, all of my H2s are now going to appear with a dashed line underneath them. Now I'm going to target the image on the page and we're going to add some padding to the image. I'll add padding of six pixels and then I'm going to add a border. The border is gonna be solid, two pixels, and I'm going to use that same color of light blue. Because I added padding, there's spacing between the edge of the photo and the border. Remember that padding is on the inside of the box, so this will allow the image to display in this particular way. I've already made the text that is the caption for the image italicized by using the M element. I'm going to apply a class to the M element, and we'll just use a class value of caption. This will allow me to uniquely target this particular M element without affecting any of the other M elements that I'm using on my page. 
I'll go ahead and select the class of caption by writing dot caption and I'm going to make the font size 12 pixels and I'm going to set the color of the font to a lighter gray. As you can see, those changes are going to update and they're going to appear on my page as specified. Let's go ahead and let's add some styling to our list items. I want the font size and the line height to match what's happening in the paragraphs. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and make a selector for UL or the unordered list, and I'm going to specify that the font size be set to 15 pixels, and we'll go ahead and add a line height of 1.5. As you can see when I do this, now the text is matching the same sort of formatting that's happening with our paragraphs. The next thing that I want to do is I want to change the strong elements inside of my list. The text that introduces the list item is wrapped in a strong element. So I'm going to use a descendant selector to ensure that I'm only going to be changing the strong elements if they are descendants of li items. To make a descendant selector, you write the first selector name followed by a space and then the second selector name. As you can see, I have li space strong. This will now target any strong elements as long as they are descendants of the list item. What I'll do here is I'll specify the color and I'm going to use the same shade of blue that I'm using on my headers. As you can see, this is going to tie in the look and feel of my website in the same sort of manner. There are a lot of different ways in which you can use CSS, but these basic styles that allow us to edit the way that fonts appear, as well as controlling the spacing between elements and adjusting the color of text-based elements is a great way to start using CSS. I would recommend that you practice using these sorts of properties and get comfortable using CSS. Don't forget that every property must be followed by a colon and every property value must terminate with a semicolon. Have fun getting to know CSS. The more comfortable you get with it, the easier it will be for you to style your pages and start to build more meaningful websites.